The title of my sermon is Prophet Like Moses and Descended from King David. And this is part of a series of sermons at Christmas time or Advent season uh, entitled Two Forms of ID Pleas. And I preached these on, well, I preached this sermon on December the 1st, 2013 at Asbury United Methodist Church in Harrington, Delaware. My name is the Reverend Dr. Lawrence Jameson. Now, uh, we use our driver's license, our check card, and other documents to prove who we are. It's something we're all used to doing. Police officers have a badge, and in, on each badge, there's a unique number that identifies them. Uh, clergy are given a certificate of ordination. I've got one. Uh, these documents are called credentials, and they're used to prove a couple of things. Who we are, our identity, and what we're authorized to do. And did you know that Jesus Christ has credentials and that they're written down? Um, they're paper credentials and they were created hundreds of years before Jesus was born in Bethlehem. God spoke to the Old Testament prophets and their inspired words were written down and we have them today. There are about 40 different messianic Old Testament prophecies that talk about who the Messiah is going to be, who he is, and what he's qualified to do. Those are his credentials. It's a very conservative thing to say there are about 40 because there are quite a few more than that. However, there's about 40 really big ones. Now, what is a messianic prophecy? Well, it's not as difficult to understand as it might sound. A messianic prophecy is a passage in the Hebrew scripture which predicts some de detail or fact about the identity of the Messiah who is the anointed leader that the Jews have been you know, looking for for so long. Now, Lee Strobel wrote about this in, in a much better way than uh, I can present here uh, in his book, The Case for Christ. And Strobel interviewed Bible scholars and mathematicians and published his findings. And I encourage you to read this research for yourself. Um, the book is called The Case for Christ by Lee Strobel. Now, I know this sounds odd, and I'm not making this up. Biblical prophecy is one of the most astounding aspects of the Christian religion. Now, if you're good at math, you'll love looking at certain sections of this. Uh, it's statistically unlikely that anyone in of all the people who have ever lived on this earth would fulfill five of the Old Testament messianic prophecies. Now, it is mind-boggling to know that Jesus fulfilled all of the messianic prophecies, not only the major 40, but hundreds of others as well. Now, the Jews waited for 2,000 years for Jesus the Messiah. And then when he arrived, all, 100% of the prophecies came true. Now in Luke chapter 24, we read about how Jesus appeared to his disciples after the crucifixion. He showed them his hands and his feet, and he said, touch me and see. And we read about this in Luke 24, 39. And then he ate some food and, uh, he was proving to them that he was alive. This was a post-resurrection appearance. Then Jesus did something truly wonderful, and this is um, found in Luke 24, starting with verse 44, and this is what Jesus said. This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. So then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. Now, let me start with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, please open our minds, just like you did for the disciples on that Easter Sunday, and help us to examine the Old Testament prophecies that point to you that are your spirit-filled credentials. Make them become uh, familiar to us and help us to be more firmly grounded in your word. And then send us out and make us faithful disciples to lead many people to come to know you as Savior and Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So every Sunday in December in 2013, I'm preaching a sermon that includes two 
of the credentials. And uh, here's number one for today, a prophet like Moses. Now, about 1,600 years before Jesus was born, God called Moses to be a prophet. And Moses, of course, led the people of Israel out of Egypt. And Moses is the one who wrote the first five books of the Old Testament, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And we're very familiar with who Moses is. Now, in Deuteronomy 18.15, Moses recorded something that the Lord told him to write down. He wrote, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own brothers. You must listen to him. End quote. So we read this in Deuteronomy 18.15. Now, this is Moses telling his people that there's going to be a prophet who is like him, who's coming afterwards. And this is one of the earliest messianic prophecies we have. Moses was predicting that this anointed leader was going to come and the people needed to listen to him. Now, somebody like Moses, well, who could that be? And the, and the Jews for hundreds of years asked that question. Now you might say, okay, the Messiah is somebody like Moses. Well, there has to be a lot of people in history who were like Moses, mm, actually, no, not that many. Uh, let's consider what Moses was like. And as I read these um, characteristics of Moses, think about Jesus and his qualifications. Moses was very humble. As a matter of fact, the Bible says he was the humblest man on earth. He was a leader. He was a great prophet. He spoke for God. He was a lawgiver. He was a deliverer. He was a teacher. He was a miracle worker. He was an anointed one. He was a mediator between God and the people. He was a human being. He was a Jewish man. Moses was the founder of one of the world's great religions. Moses, when he was an infant, uh, had his life threatened by an evil king and so he spent his early years in Egypt. Uh, Moses performed the most amazing miracles uh, recorded in the Old Testament. Moses appointed 70 leaders to teach and guide the people. And there isn't anyone in the history of the world that is like Moses as much as Jesus of Nazareth is. Now you might say, well, show me in the New Testament where it quotes Deuteronomy 18.15 and says that Jesus fulfilled that prophecy. You know, um, how, come, how can I believe what you're saying? Uh, perhaps you're making this up. So show me in the New Testament where uh, the, the New Testament authors understood this as a messianic prophecy. Okay. Uh, Acts 3.22. For Moses said, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You must listen to everything he tells you. End quote. So here we have in the New Testament um, a direct quote of that Old Testament prophecy and applying it to the fulfillment of prophecy in Jesus. Now, the first Messianic prophecy is short, but it tells us a lot about Jesus. The Anointed One is someone quite special and amazing. Uh, the Anointed One is uh, someone whose life is destined to change the world. Now, before I go on with the second form of ID, uh, let me talk to you about the practical application of this first prophecy. Now, we, need, we all need to know the Ten Commandments. They're very important to us. The Ten Commandments were given to us through Moses on Mount Sinai. And basically, these Ten Commandments and the morality of the Old Testament forms the basis for the morality of, and ethics for our entire world today. Now, that's undisputed. But as great as those laws are, and as great as the truths are that God revealed to Moses, uh, they are not nearly as important as having a personal forgiven relationship with Jesus Christ. It's important to know the moral law. It is more important to know the Lord who wrote those laws, who created everything, you and me, right and wrong. 
It's one thing to have a knowledge of what is right and wrong. It's a completely different thing to be forgiven and cleansed yourself personally and from the inside out. Jesus does, <laughs> Jesus does what Moses could only dream about, changing men and women from the inside out, forgiving them, putting them in right relationship with God and incorporating them in God's family. The entire book of Hebrews talks about this dynamic. And if you want to know uh, more about how Jesus is better than Moses, read the book of Hebrews and uh, you'll see why. In Hebrews 11:26, the Bible says, he, he's talking about Moses, regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward, end quote. So here, uh, the author of the book of Hebrews is talking about this very thing, how Jesus is, is so important and how he's like Moses, but better. Now, it is a good thing to study the works of Moses, but it is a far better thing to be forgiven and cleansed and to be empowered to be a disciple of Jesus Christ and to follow him. Let's talk about the second form of ID, uh, descended from King David. Now, about a thousand years before Jesus was born, God called David to be a prophet and to also rule over Israel. So this is important because uh, in the Old Testament, there was um, three categories of people who were anointed. There was a uh, prophet, priest, and king. And there's no person in the entire Bible except for Jesus who was all three, prophet, priest, and king. Um, these three offices were, were anointed. In other words, they had oil put on their head as an inauguration into their, um, their role as ser a servant for the people. Uh, as a prophet speaking for God, as a priest uh, standing in the gap and bringing people back to God, and as a king ruling over God's people. So God called David to be two of these things, to be a king and to be a prophet. And David uh, led his people in battle, and he also wrote many of the Psalms. And in the Psalms are the source of many of the his, the um, messianic prophecies that we have today. Now, uh, this particular one is not in the Psalms. It's uh, recorded in 2 Samuel 7, 11 to 13. Now listen carefully to the scripture because this is something that Jesus could fold up and put in his wallet as a form of identification, this little verse right here. The Lord declares to you that the Lord himself will establish a house for you. When your days are over and you rest from with your fathers, I will raise up your offspring to succeed you who will come from your own body. And I will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will build a house for my name. And I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. End quote. Now, have you ever read the genealogy of Jesus in Matthew and also in Luke? Uh, it makes you wonder when you look at these genealogies, I wonder why they did that, you know, because after all, that seems uh, incredibly boring to look at a list of names. Why go to all that trouble? It's all about Bible prophecy. It's all about the credentials of Jesus and showing the world who he is. It's important. It's part of how we know that Jesus of Nazareth is really the Messiah of Jewish expectation. Now, if you look at the first 12 words in the New Testament, the very first 12 words in the New Testament, there, that's Matthew chapter one, verse one, the Bible says this, a record of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David. Now, those are actually beautiful words um, if you've never thought about it before, those first 12 words in the New Testament are just pointing to Jesus and showing us that he is the fulfillment of a particular Bible prophecy. These words prove that God keeps his promises. He made a promise to King David, and guess what? God followed through. It took over a thousand years for that promise to be fulfilled, and the Jews waited, and they paid attention. And today, today, 
We all suffer from attention deficit disorder. You know, we want everything instantly. We have instant coffee, instant oatmeal, microwave popcorn. Can you imagine what it must have been like to wait for a thousand years for something to happen, for God to fulfill that promise? Dear ones, our God can be trusted. He always keeps his promises. He never forgets the details. His love shines brightly, passionately, beautifully in the way that he cares for us. And God always has reasons for what he does. It is not an accident that you are here today. It is not an accident that I'm here right now sharing with you the good news. You have been adopted by the king. You are a princess. You are a prince. Our Lord has given the power his marvelous power for you to see who he truly is, to see his credentials so that you can know who he is and uh, get in touch with what he has the authority to do. Now, I'm going to conclude in this first sermon in the series by reading Luke 24, verses 44 to 45. Listen for the words that Jesus would speak to you personally. And this is Jesus speaking. This is what I told you. While I was still with you, everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the Law of Moses, the Prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the Scriptures. Amen. God bless you and thank you so much for listening to this sermon.